and Tilla watched the children in the park, seeking out just the right child. Her dark brown eyes flitted from one minor skirmish to another. Her ears captured the sounds of confrontation and torment. From her bench, she enjoyed a grand buffet. Tasty ripples of anguish and raw, untutored sorrow lapped against her awareness. The air was surprisingly cool, a midsummer day, and contrasted pleasantly with the warmth of sunshine she felt on her cheeks and bare arms. Such perfect weather filled the park from toddlers to preteens. Over by the swings, a bigger boy extorted money in the time-honored tradition. The merest hint of an upraised, upraised fist to his posture communicated the power behind the threat. Delicious. And Tella licked her lips and grudgingly let her attention wander on to the monkey bars, where three girls with identical lengths of blonde braids and rail thin, all but pubescent bodies, viciously taunted an overweight girl. The chubby victim sobbed, tears trickled down her cheeks. And Tella held her breath, savoring the irony as she felt the girl's self image shrink in upon itself. The flair of it more than satisfied but the trio of girls lacked the subtlety her needs required. They could teach her nothing. As she lingered, a stab of hysterical anguish lashed across her mind from a different location. And Tella jerked her head to stare at a sandbox at the far end of the tiny park. A six-year-old king held court, dispensing his magisterial largesse to two children in the form of toy trucks, red and shiny. There were no parents on any of the nearby benches, no one but Antella to witness the systematic plea with which the child first shared and then took away toy after toy, bathing in the wails of frustration and longing he elicited. Oh, there you are, my bad, bad boy, Antella whispered to herself, there's my tiny professor. Her breath came quick and her knees felt suddenly weak. An exhilaration rushed through her. That boy, that innately monstrous child, would be the one. She drew a slender object from her pocket, a laser pointer by all appearances. She targeted the sandbox tyrant and flashed the beam. It blazed his forehead with light, and she smiled as it changed from red to blue, marking the boy like a character in a Herman Hess novel. And Tella felt the link coalesce, that delicate connection that would bring her so much. She flicked the beam off and dropped the object back in her pocket. She looked youngish, mid-twenties perhaps, draped in a moderately attractive human form grown for her from surreptitiously obtained tissues. She addressed nondescriptively, deliberately blending in so she could move among them and learn. There was so much to learn. Her legs had steadied now, and she rose, crossing the park to sit at one of the unoccupied benches within range of her quarry. What's your name, little boy? She said, loud enough for the children in the sandbox to hear, but no one farther. All three looked up. The two victims' faces held hope, plainly desperate for an intervening adult. Her target's face displayed a surprising recognition, as though at some level he was aware of the link. Gregory, he said, and snatched a fire truck back from one of his playmates. He hadn't needed to look. His hand had simply darted out, questing fingers closed around the cab of the truck and wrenched it from the other boy's grasp. And Tella's eyes met his and locked. She opened herself to the link and at once began building schemata, packets of knowledge and behavior from his linked mind. So much to learn if her people had even a prayer of dealing with the creatures of this planet so much to master and apply. Primal patterns flowed into her, blunt and unquestioning bits of learning, associations, relationships, strategies of pitting one parent against another. Partial truths and cunning lies took form. She marveled at feigned deafness to unwanted instructions and commands. She trembled before the situation interpretations of moral imperatives redefined on the fly. 
All these tender treacheries Gregory, Gregory's mind revealed, and Antella inscribed the lesson in her mind. The end wound within her with the cold certainty that children live daily in all things. There was no room for doubt in this child's mind, no subtle shadings of gray, only black and white, absolutes of certainty and reality. She absorbed it all, made it her own. Thank you, Gregory, you've been a wonderful tutor. The link collapsed in upon itself, the frail connection shattering as quickly as it had formed. Antella's mind whirled and burned with newfound structures. They were basic, simplistic really, eminently foundational. And now they belong to her, the building blocks from which she'd craft policy and diplomacy and manipulate the adult peoples of Earth. Let them come at her with their agendas and conflicted complexities of thought too entangled for her species to comprehend her map. The template of their childhoods lived inside each of them. In time, she'd assimilate and accommodate Gregory's gifts. His weapons and tools would pierce each adult's facade effortlessly, skewer them on their own convoluted emotional lives. And Tella would be free to savor the subtle wash of anguish that would result. She rose from the bench, stepped into the sandbox, and reached out a hand to lightly tossle Gregory's hair. Do you want to know a secret, Gregory? All three children stared up at her. Gregory's victims clearly still hoped for salvation while he smiled up at her, eyes bright at the promise of secrets to come. Antella crouched, hands resting on her knees until she was level with him. Span the entire galaxy if you like, species upon species, and one constant stands out. Children are cruel beyond an understanding. You're pretty. Gregory said in response after looking at her silently for a moment. Before she could reply, and utterly without warning, he spat in her face, rolled to the side, and was immediately up and running away. The other two children in the sandbox gasped and resumed crying. Intella grinned to herself. She wiped her face with the back of her hand, enjoying the sensation of textures her new body provided, so very different from her native senses. This was going to be a good trip. That much she knew beyond certainty. She straightened up, stalked out of the sandbox, and gazed around the park with a newfound sense of purpose. She allowed herself a light laugh. Children are cruel, she said, but they make such excellent teachers. <laughs>